subject and topic that the Lord has dropped in my spirit. I know that the theme is the family of God. And it says if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Well, I want to say this too. If one part succeeds, we should all succeed Amen. together. Amen. I really believe that. I think, I think that um, many, many times we uh, uh, there's too much jealousy that goes on. And then there are those who say, well, this happened over here, so maybe we ought to incorporate that in our church. Maybe that won't work in your church. That's right. But there is something that works along all lines, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. How many of you see that? Uh, go ahead and put that graphic up, Brother Daniel, if you would. Uh, this is what I really want to talk to you about today. Um, there it is. Can anybody tell me what that is? How many of you took math? And what's that sign? What is that sign? It means greater than. If you invert that sign and go back the other way, it means less than. Do you know that Jesus used math in his speaking a lot of times? And he even told us that greater things shall you do. So let us look at John's Gospel, the 14th chapter. And we're going to have it up there for you so you don't have to turn there. Uh, verse uh, 11 to begin with. There we go. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. Now, Jesus is speaking to his disciples. And what I want to do today is I want to lay a foundation and an introduction uh, for about five minutes just so that we can move on from here. And I, I am going to tell you that I am completely assured and confident that, that the topic and subject that I'm ministering on today is, is going to do one of two things. It's going to draw you closer to what this subject is about. If your eyes and your spirit are open, you're going to move towards it. If that word can get into your ears and down in your heart, it's going to move you towards the Lord and the things that God wants you to do. And uh, he says here, he said, I tell you the truth, anyone who has, verse 12, who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. That's pretty exciting, isn't it? Yes, it is. And we sit here and we go, oh, but I'm not doing that. Because we have faith in him. But he says, if we have faith, you do what I have been doing. He will even do greater things. Why? He will do greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. And I will do, here's His promise, whatever you ask in my name. Why do we hear these words and then we just poop them away as if, well, that was written for that time or if that works out in our church services, maybe that will work out. But when we come in a meeting like this and we get inspired, hopefully today, that we'll leave this place with these words impregnated in us and never ever take the tuck tail and run from it. Jesus is speaking and I believe the words that he spoke crossed every line. I believe if it was good for them, it's good for, good for us. He said, because I'm going to the Father and I will do, everything is positive with Jesus. I will do whatever you ask in my name. Really? So that the Son may bring glory to the Father and you may ask anything in my name, and I will do it. Powerful, powerful verses of Scripture. I said something in the bishops' meeting yesterday. I said all of my life, since I was a small child, I, I, my grandfather was a Pentecostal preacher. He, he, he preached on his 100th birthday at the Assemblies of God uh, National Convention. He sang a song. He wrote a lot of songs. And, and he was a great... He was a great man of God. I never heard a, a foul word come out of his mouth. I never heard him talk about anybody. He lived the life. He, he taught the doctrine, the true doctrine. He, he was, if there was anything that I felt like that I look back on it now, he, he was probably a little bit legalistic. If you wear short pants, you might go to hell. <laughs> if you go to picture shows, don't get caught when the rapture comes. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and we've, we've grown beyond that now, I hope. 
And so we have to know by reading these verses of Scripture that God cannot fail in His promise. Sometimes failures are on our part for not believing. And that's, that's all the way through the Bible. And so we have to lay hold on these exceeding great and precious promises. And God is willing to pass over a million people just to anoint you just because you believe. Wow. You have to believe that. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. He's going to find somebody with faith. Amen. He's looking. He said, my eye runs to and fro over, over the earth. Yes. I, I, Brother Henderson was quipping yesterday about an all-Europe, an all-African conference. And he said these words. And I knew God was corroborating exactly what I, what I was about to say. He said, he said, this was my challenge to do greater things. Do you remember that, brother? Yes. I wrote it down. I heard it. Every single one of those guys has some reference to doing something greater. It's, it's, if it's not in you to want to do and, and, and be successful for the kingdom of God and for Jesus Christ, there's something wrong with us. We need to find out what it is. We need to believe His Word and we need to move forward today from this moment on. Amen. In those things. And I listened to uh, the different ones as they spoke, but I, I believe that God is the author of greater things. Yes. yes. He, but only through Jesus. Jesus kept saying, I'm the one who will do it. If you ask me my name, I'll get it done. Don't worry about it. It's going to get done. And, and I know what you're going to say, but I'm going to, I'm going to address that a little bit. I pray for people and nothing happened. I'm going to talk about that. And so, and, it, and it's only by the power of the Holy Spirit that it's going to happen. I listened as, as God confirmed in all of their stories about greater things. And Brother Oklahoma, the greater works is the publishing that you've been doing. I mean, who would have thought? I don't know if you've ever dreamed about it before. Maybe God put it in you, and I believe the Bible said God give you the desires of your heart. And I used to think, oh good, God's going to give me everything I want. No, it means that God's going to put desires in your heart, and you're going to be the one to fulfill it. He's waiting on you to fulfill things, fulfill things that He's put in your heart to do. Yeah. And I believe God's going to stir you now for the things that you, there's some of them, you looked at them and said, they, they ain't going to come up now. They're dead. I might as well bury them. And God said, no, resurrect them because they're about to happen. Amen. And you've got to believe some of these things. I really truly believe that. And so I, I believe if you're presently thinking or dreaming of things to be done, then that, that seem out of reach and impossible, then today you're in a good place. Thank you for that, Howard. Yes. <laughs> so, I believe God trusts those whose hearts can house His desires and He can work through you. Yes. yes. If you can house God's desires, then God can, He's entrusting something in you. Amen. He's already put some trust in you because you've done some things according to His Word. I'll talk about Peter in a little bit. But but if 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 that if that body suffers, every part suffers. If that body is honored, then every part is honored. And we ought to everyone rejoices when they see something happen. Amen. It couldn't be couldn't bring any greater pleasure to me to see every one of us operating in the full capacity of these words that Jesus gave us. Bar none. Period. Now, I know the gamut of ages. Well, who's the youngest one in here? How old are you, son? 20 what? 3? 21? How about you? He's 18. Oh, okay. Who's the oldest? Maybe it's me. Oh, brother, you're 79. Right. Anybody, anybody over 79? <laughs> All right. So, so what I'm saying is, if you're here and you're young, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, don't excuse yourself from this message today. Amen. And if you're 79 years old, don't excuse yourself from this message today. Amen. And somebody else said it. Moses didn't start until he was 80. Right. Right. Come on now. And some of the greater things haven't happened yet. It's simply because we haven't embraced the knowledge and the promises that God wants us to have yet. So, and, and, and I'm just trying to lay a foundation. Even as the floods lifted up the ark to save Noah and his family, you were still on his agenda for the future. Yes, God. Wow. Well, that's it. Everybody's 
the whole planet is leveled, it's, it's over, and just no one is family. But even after all that destruction, he continued with his plan. He continued. The Godhead was not going to waste the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He was not going to waste that until you had a chance to believe in the lamb's sacrifice for yourself. It was impossible for you not to be here now. I want you to get that. You were a plan of God. It's impossible. God, nothing could supersede God's plans. Amen. And so, if, if you be, really begin to think about it, uh, you consider what you've been through just to be here in this life. Uh, we've heard some testimonies of that. Some of you have escaped death by the skin of your teeth. I, I, I ran through a house that was on fire when I was six years old. I almost drowned twice. I was hit by a car when I was five. Knocked 100 feet in the air. My shoe, my shoes stayed put right on the spot. It hit me with the shoelaces still tied. The impact jerked me out like the rapture. Crushed my pelvic bone. I was in a body cast for six weeks. I mean, people were all in a circle looking at me. A little boy on the ground. And the first words I heard was, Boy, God must have saved you for something. And that stuck with me. <laughs> he that did. stuck with me. He did. <laughs> and, and, and you know, it's just a word like that. Who knows who that person was? But people back in my day believed in God. Amen. Yes. And so... There's things we've been through in this life, but I don't. I believe most of us are here today because we haven't plumbed the depths of what God wants us to do for Him yet. Now, if somebody thinks just praying for the sick and them getting healed is the greater thing, yes, that's wonderful. But there are great ministries to be launched. Come on now. You've got to let your spirit rise up within you. You've got to understand that there's things God wants you to interface with people on continents and nations. There's technological things today that blow your mind. So when, when you think about how you, you got to be born into this generation, we ought to celebrate the fact that you were planned. I was planned from, from eternity to be here. Yes. I'm going somewhere with this. Even now, even, you, even to know who you are known by. Just look next to you, left and right. You say, well, look, you know, I know this guy and it's kind of, you know, God networks and knits together the people he wants us to be friends with, we, and even our family. Amen? And so, um, and he, he wants you to know uh, the, the, that the abilities that you're operating in, he wants you to know that they're of him and by him, and he wants to expand those. See, I never, I never have believed that we should remain status quo in any part of our lives. Never. Should never happen. And I, I think there's probably some of us sitting here that would probably say 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, I never thought I'd be operating and doing what I'm doing now. <clears throat> Come on, think back just a little bit. Some of you are in ministry. Some of you have done some wonderful works. Some of you have done some great works, some great things for God. God is using you. God has bestowed giftings and abilities for you to operate in and in your generation and even uh, he's raised you up to be leaders, pastors, prophets or whatever title man might want to give you. He's chosen you for the now and you're here in this generation for a purpose. And if we cannot see who or what we are in Christ, we are not going to act at that level. If you can't see it, you can't be it. And, and, I, and everybody talks about that word level, and I don't want to overuse that word, but there's sometimes you've got you you to take a step up and you've got to come on up. And God wants us to come up today to another level. And that has to be, that has to be by the Spirit. I believe it was John, this, he heard the Spirit say, come up. Every time you hear something like that, and Isaiah looked up and he saw the Lord high. Lifted up. And too many have lost sight of, of those important eternal plans that are happening at just the right time in your life. In the sight of God, it is not what you have, it's how you use what you have. Yes, amen. Amen. Well, I don't have well, what do you have? Moses, what do you have? Well, all I have is a rock. Throw it down. Yeah. 
It's how you use what you have. That's right. See, well, I don't have much. I, and we, you know, the first thing our minds go to is finances. We can't do this. We can't do that because we don't have. Jesus said you can do greater things. And that covers finances. And I know some of you have dreamed some big dreams. You, you, you want to see, you want, you want to hold meetings. You want to see souls saved. I mean, that ought to be some driving factors in our life, that we want to see some souls saved. Amen. So, in, in the end, and we may need to ask ourselves, who am I? Yes. Who is God telling me today as I'm listening to this preacher? Who am I? Because I want to do who I am. I want to do what God, who God says I am. My question is, are we giving it our best? Have we always given it our best? And more importantly, will we finish strong knowing that He who has called us has totally, completely equipped us for the journey? You see, I'm not leaving anything out, so there's no excuses here for anybody. What is expected of you can best be answered by asking, what do I expect of me? Uh, so what we do is we, we cheat and we give ourselves a way out. You know, if this doesn't work out, then <laughs> it's like that. I was preaching to Brother Michaels a couple of weeks ago, and I said it was kind of like that time I was in that hotel room. I was in the shower, and uh, I wrapped a towel around me, and they they give you a free newspaper. They set it right outside the stoop, you know. And so, uh, <laughs> so you know, you open the door with a towel around you, and and you look out and there's nobody there, and you go out to reach it, and all of a sudden the door slams behind you, <laughs> and you're in there. Well, let me tell you, when God closes the door, you ain't going back where you used to be. Right, it's time closed. to go forward. Yeah. But make sure you got your pants on. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way to do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, wow. So, I think now that I know what I know, is there anything impossible to us regardless of my status in life? Some of you say, well, I never had the real opportunity. I don't have a picture. We're not talking about big or small. We're not talking about any of those things. See, God can, God's a great equal, equalizer. Yeah. He can do things beyond what man can do. And, 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 and really, your status in life is just a period, no excuses, as compared to greater things. Greater things. And, and I think in association would be happy to have nothing but men and women ministers who are ready to move out and who are accomplishing the greater things that Jesus is talking about. We're going to discuss some of those things in just a moment. And while you're listening to me, I want you to open your spirit to the Holy Spirit because you're going to have a chance to respond today because I, I definitely do not believe this is by chance God gave me this message. This is not by chance. This is by design. We all have the same access to the same Bible, to the same Lord, to the same power, but to what extent? That's an honest question. And then and, and are we embracing it? Oh, we might measure ourselves against ourselves, but what would what, we would not serve our real individual callings only just to puff ourselves up. Because I, when I see some of these guys, I said in that bishop council yesterday, when I left there, I felt about this small. And I, I, I'm being honest. I'm just being honest. I thought, I'm not worthy to undo any of these guys' shoes, to be honest with you. To, to, the, to the individual, I do not think there's no way I can measure up to what I know these, who these guys are and what they've done in their life. But since we have this knowledge and assurances, then we must ask ourselves, to what degree do I believe Jesus wants me to succeed for Him? To what degree? Where am I in my faith level? What level am I on? And, and, and I have to say to you, greater things was in the paperwork that He left us. It was signed as a promissory note in His blood. That's what He said. And it's, it's His heartbeat. He promised us in John 14, 12, greater 
words shall you do because I go to the Father. Now, do you have the message translation? I want you to see this in verse 12. This is what it says in the message. Uh, I'm in my Father, and my Father's in me. If you, if you can't believe that, believe what you see. These works. The person you, who trusts me will not only do what I'm doing. Let's stop there for a moment. Will not only do what I'm doing. And many of us will say, well, I'm really not doing what Jesus is doing. Because that's the minimum requirement that Jesus said we ought to start with. Am I right? Thank you. Jesus said, the person who trusts me. The NIV said, who believes in me. And we can say, well, yes, we believe in you. Who trusts me will not only do what I am doing, but even greater things. And you know what we do with our religious spirit? Oh, well, bless the Lord. Who wants to do anything and how could they possibly do anything greater than what Jesus did? Look it up, Brother Harbuck could tell us in the Greek. It means the quality of those deeds were just as great as what Jesus did. And Jesus is talking about more and more and more of the same quality deeds. Research it. Wow. Greater works. In other words, the message is saying, I've given you the same works to do that I have been doing. <coughs> My question is, have we been doing it? We say we're his disciples. What did Jesus do? <laughs> Need to give you a litany of all of the things he did. Man, he healed people, he raised the dead, he opened the blind. And these are the greater things that I'm talking about we ought to be doing. Well, you know, I've got a church and we just can't push things on people. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. You start believing that you're one of those who's supposed to do greater works and you'll find more people in your church than you know where to put them. I hear these different missionaries go to these places and they said that their attendance is a little light until somebody's blind eyes are open and the next night they can't house them all. Yes. Right. Come on now. You know what I'm talking about. He that believeth on me. Jesus promised that at least that level for those who believe. He promised at least that level and then He said, and greater. Well, why are you pushing this greater stuff? Why don't we just, why don't we just today start with the minimum requirement? Because you can't stay there. You'll never be satisfied. Because Jesus is the one who's pushing it, not me. It's His Word, not mine. He said, the works I do shall you do, and greater works than these. Some of us are still waiting to do one work Jesus did. <laughs> when He said greater. We blame our sheep for not believing, and all the while the shepherds are doubting. Wow. Yeah. That's a, uh, tough. We leave ourselves open for doubt, and doubt, doubts are the ants in the pants of faith. <laughs> you ever got ants in your pants? Yes. I mean, in Texas, we have what's called fire ants. Anybody know what that is? <laughs> we were out in the field the other day, and my, my wife and I were looking at, oh, look at that over there. So she's going, oh, and she starts, you know, she's doing it. Her focus is on what has attacked her. And the church can't focus on anything but what's attacking them. Doubt is the ants in the pants of faith. Yeah, right. It's hard to have faith and doubt at the same time. Right. Yeah. Our churches choose doubt as a philosophy. It's kind of like choosing immobility as a means of transportation. Come on. We're not getting anywhere real fast. <laughs> to the one who has faith, no explanation is necessary. To the one who has no faith, no explanation is possible. We've all believed or we wouldn't be here. Of course, there are degrees of faith that put demands on God that can make that things happen, but are we doing it? You mean, you mean I can put demands on God? All you have to do is claim His Word. That's what I'm talking about, make demands on. I believe on Jesus. That got me into Him. That puts me on the right road. But I'm beyond that. We've graduated to greatest, the greatest privilege of all humanity, and that is to work in the vineyard of the God of the universe. 
He's called us now to a level of greater works. You, you can't walk out these doors today and say, I'm not a candidate for that. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot not make this level. He said you can. He said you can. I've sat around and wondered where my deeds or my works may fall in the, in, the, in the pecking order of humanity at the judgment seat of Christ. I know some of you thought that. Kind of, well, I've got some stuff accomplished here. Just wonder how that would work out at the judgment seat, comparatively speaking, you know. I never thought that way, you know. I come away, every time I reflect on it, I come away so disappointed. that I will never not want to accomplish anything he paid for me to be. That's all I want to do. You notice I didn't say everything he paid for me to have. I said to be. Forget the have stuff. If you be what God wants you to be, you'll have everything you need. Question. How is it that the ascended Christ, the ascended Christ can do more through us than the Father did through him? Hmm? This mystery causes me to bow in humility. It's not our work, but the works of the risen Lord. So when he says to you, do greater works, he's not saying, bless God, you're going to have to go out there and do it or I'm going to get my big stick out of you. He just asking you to believe what he just said. So you begin to do it. Because he's the one doing it. He said, ask him my name and I will do it for you. And then we just read that. You have, to, you have to remember that. I just want to be like him. I want to love like him. I want to live like him. And, and then a lot of time he's given me. And if I come up short, it's not his fault. Amen. I truly believe we have settled for much less than... He has considered we might have already excess by now. Mm -hmm. I said something at, at Brother uh, Michael's the other day. I said in my church, and I said, I'm not afraid of failure, but I'm scared to death I might accomplish something that means absolutely nothing in this life. Amen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can get so far off of one side, we just go, 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 and it doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with God. I don't want to succeed in anything that doesn't have anything to do with God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When we consider the privileges of heaven's bestowment, I mean, after all, every gift of the Holy Spirit is at our fingertips, at our faith level. It's only over when you quit. That's right. And if you ain't dead, he ain't done. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Hello? Yeah. Yes. Failure only means you try again, but this time with more experience. I'm getting real good at that. I'm gaining more experience than I've ever had at failure. Because every time I fail, I gain new experience. So I, every now and then I do achieve one or two things. I don't know if you remember this, but when Mexico City had their devastating earthquake, probably... It was probably just in the early 2000s or the late 1990s. Anybody remember that? It was a tremendous earthquake there. Uh, one small little boy, about eight years old, went door to door trying to raise $1 million for those who were displaced in Mexico City. He was in Mexico. And he was selling 25 cent postcards. So he goes and knocks on the door and one man comes to the door and he, he told him his story and he was taken back by the young by the young fellow's vigor. And he said, do you really expect to raise all of this by yourself? And he said, by myself? Oh, no, sir. I have a helper. He had another little boy helping him. <laughs> a million dollars, do you understand? We have the greatest helper heaven can afford is called the Holy Ghost. Amen. That little boy thought, if I can sell enough 25 cent postcards, I can help some folks out. Here we are sitting in the most incredible times to be living in, and we can't even rely on the Holy Spirit to get done what Jesus said we ought to be getting done. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. 
It's the helper who does all the heavy lifting. See, nobody's going to look at you and say, well, he couldn't accomplish that. If they gave you credit for doing it, then it would be the wrong credit anyway. That's right. That's, That's right. right. Amen. Yes. So it's always the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you where you are and if you're in a small church or if you're in a small ministry, it doesn't even matter if, you're, if your ministry is large. It really, none of this really matters. It's what can your faith engage from this point forward today. Yeah. Today, now. May 17th, 2014. I will not be relegated to less less than when, this, when he says greater than. I will not settle for those who pat me on the back and say, you know, you're 73 now. You need to wind down on all the time. The Holy Ghost is winding me up for the big wind-up. Yes, that's good. I'm not interested in leaving this place until uh, I can tap into the greater works, the greater things that Jesus wants me to accomplish. It might be some dreams that He's put in me that I don't even know yet. And I'm staying awake and trying to figure out, God, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to turn a nation upside down? Just let me know. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, I can't dream that big because, you know, I haven't attained anything yet. Well, all you got to do is believe. Uh, uh, and just open up. God will, God will, you just say, yes, Lord. That's all you got to do. All you got to do. Don't accept the enemy's lies. The only power he has is what you agree with him for. That's right. When you start agreeing with him, then he has power. You so don't even agree with him. I'm convinced you are potentially the greatest world changers to come to planet Earth since the original disciples. You say, you look around and you say, who, me? I'm talking to you today. I'm delivering a message I believe God gave me to give to you. And I'm looking at you saying, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? I'm not doubting God. I'm just saying, these guys? <laughs> Do you think he looked at those 12 and said, Father, are you sure? I really, I truly believe this. I believe out of this bunch today can be some of the greatest world changers that the world has ever seen. I don't care what your age is. Amen. I don't I don't care who's missing that's not in here now. I'm talking about you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Mm -hmm. We've been fast forward into a technological world we don't understand and hard for us to keep up with, but God has some weapons of His own Amen. that can defeat hopelessness, sickness, sin, slackness, and persecution. And I believe we're that generation now, today. Amen. Even though there is an overlap of the next generation, Coming on, that's that's beyond us in age, uh, younger than us. But I refuse to be outfaithed, outworked, outprayed, and outserved just because they're succeeding us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's raise the bar by utilizing all the greater anointings and giftings Jesus in heaven's toolbox. Right. Weapon. Everybody's got weapons. China, Russia, the U.S. God's got more weapons than you know what to do with. Right. And He's putting you in control of them. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Politics, banking system. Come on. Yeah. You're going to know people that you're going to influence with the gospel. They might just say they might be a world changer. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You say, how do I directly? Maybe God's going to use you indirectly. You never know. But you're going to have to embrace something today. That's right. I mean, if getting saved is everything, then why didn't God just come down with a claw hammer, hit us all in the head, and take us home? <laughs> That's what He wanted, just to get us saved. I mean, that would have been the greatest thing in the world. But why did He leave us here? Because you and I are the fulfillment of Jesus' words, greater things shall you do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In all honesty and in all humility that I can muster, I have not, and I want to repeat, I have not lived up to his expectations of me or even my expectations of me. 
I'm just being transparent as I can be. And I want to tell you one word that comes across in this conference that I, I heard. I heard it from, where are you, brother? He said it right up here. He used the word real. You're being real today. Yeah. This is a real conference. This is real people. This is a real Christ. This is a real mandate for us to begin to do greater things. We're all keepers of the flame and we must not allow the fire to go out. How? I expect, hear me now, I expect for me this year and next year to tap into the greater things by greater faith, by greater surrender, yeah. by greater passion for the greater works that He promised. Yeah. I expect no less from all of us to accept a monumental shift from sitting idle to burning rubber from zero to 100 from today fall. Asking God to show us the how, the when, and the where to believe that anything is possible at any time. Amen. I don't care if you're staring cancer in the face. You look at it and you say, it's not by my power, but Jesus said, he gives me authority over you and I tell you to leave in Jesus' name. Amen. Your credentials have been verified. Your lives have been sanctified. Your goals have been declassified all because He's been crucified. Yes. It's time for us to do something with the Word of God. And He said, you shall receive power after. We're living in the after and, just, and the just before. We're living in that after time. We ought to all have to get caught up today for just before He comes back. It's time to man up. Well, what does that include? It's, it's easier to say that it does not exclude anything. See, we're always looking for that. Well, what does that include? And we're looking for, you know, oh, yeah, oh, that's it. No, it doesn't exclude anything. That's the best way to answer that. I don't care before today if you laid hands on somebody to be healed and they weren't. Don't exclude that in the future. How many of you ever heard of Todd White? Anybody? Okay, he's a great, great young man. God delivered him from drugs and he goes out on the street ministry. Uh, a friend of his who mentored him came to our church and was telling us about it. He prayed for people to be healed 900 times and they were not healed. He prayed on the 901st time and someone got healed. There you go. You know what? He could have been so discouraged, so disappointed. Well, you know, God, I doubt that this word works. And now, it's probably 99 to 100% every time he goes out. Just calls people out on the street. Hey, you got this wrong with you. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, power. Boom. Why? Because he's, he believes the word. Great works. So it doesn't exclude anything. And we're going to have a chance today. You're going to have a chance today to have people lay hands on you and believe for the greater works, the greater deeds, the greater thing for your body, for your ministry, for your anointings, for your church, for the dreams that God has put into you. This is what God's going to do for you today. And it all fits into these greater things. And I think we need to expect that your anointed preachings and teachings and and, uh, to persuade people to conviction and decision by the Holy Spirit, I want to tell you what, there should never be one of your words fall to the ground right. without accomplishing something. God's words don't. He said, my words shall not return unto me, boy. Right. And when Samuel was talked about, he said, none of his words fell to the ground. Expected more souls, more of everything. What does that include? Anything than you ever influenced in the past. That word influence is an interesting word. It means an outflow. Something comes out of you and into somebody else. You can call it salt and light. You can call it power of anointing. You can call it whatever you want. But God put you here as an influence. Yes. God can exponentially multiply your deeds, words, and gifts to the kingdom. 
I know, I know, I know, I know. We sit here and I, I've heard guys like me get up and say, and they say, wow, man, that's great for some of these guys. These are powerful men of God. And all this time, God's gnawing at me. The Holy Ghost is gnawing at my spirit. Saying, I'm talking to you, boy. Yeah. All we have to do is make a faith demand on His promise of greater things. I believe we have to see what God sees in us. He sees beyond your perceived potential. Did you hear what I just said? Your perceived potential. He sees beyond what you think you see. Uh huh. He sees that that's your perce your perceived potential existing in possibilities, capable of actually being one of those where nobody saw it coming. They might be talking about you in, in a couple of months. And, Man, I didn't see it coming in this guy. What do you think those disciples thought when Peter got out of that boat? We never saw it coming, man. Come on. Even on a calm day, they wouldn't think Peter would have gotten out of a boat. Why well, does it make sense? But I believe Jesus thought it did, or he would not have given it an, as an example of walking on the water. Because he said, whatever I see my father do or say, that's what I do or say. And I believe he was giving us an example. He said, whatever I do, he said, you shall do, and greater things than these shall you do. So he was just giving Peter an example. And Peter's the only one that bit. I believe Jesus, if we would have had a conversation, him thinking out loud, I believe he, when he saw Peter get it out, out of that boat, I believe he said to himself, I knew I made a good choice in that guy. Mm -hmm. Come on. When nobody else did, he did. Yeah, man. Amen. Right. He's the one who practiced Jesus by saying, rise up. Yes. Walk. And all he ever did was started somewhere watching Jesus do the same thing. Anybody listening to me? Yes, sir. You'll never do a miracle in one inch of water. You're going to have to get out of the boat. Too many of us have operated in mile wide faith with only one inch deep in power. <laughs> Come on, Come on. We got faith for everything, but you know what? Where's the power for just one thing? Where's the anointing for the one thing? There's a lot more that goes with just believing. You've got to have confidence in the one who said it. Amen. Come on. He followed in Jesus' steps. Everything he said, I believe Peter would say, everything I saw him do that I do. He even mimicked Jesus' words to people. His faith put demands on God's promise for greater works. Is, now let me ask you, is greater works the end all? Is that why we're here today? One man quit greater works. <laughs> I'm still struggling with the ordinary. And most of us are. To be very honest with you, most of us are. <laughs> Pastor Lynn, I'd love to be able to lay hands on one guy and see him heal right before my eyes. How many of you have actually done that and seen somebody heal before your eyes? Can I see your hands? Praise God. How many of you have seen it 10, 15, 20 times? I know. I, look at there. See, it happens. It happens. And so this is, not the, this is not the ordinary. Peter had confidence what Jesus said was true, that his words that he said were true. It's unfathomable what possibilities await us when he is all that matters and he gets all the glory. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I was talking to this brother today, sitting right back here. California, and we were talking about these big ministries and big names and radio and TV, and you know the reference was there. But I, I, I shudder to think before the judgment seat of Christ if they make it that far. <laughs> you know what I mean? How God will look at their hearts and say, "Did you do it for my glory or for yours?" Wow, right, man, come on. I think there was a lot of things done. God will honor His Word, even above His name. Come on. Did I get that correct? Is that the way it reads? Or is His name above His Word? Did I get it right? Word. Good Word. That's what I thought. Okay. So, 
when we begin to think about this, I think a lot of things happen because the Word of God is preached and He has to honor His Word. So things happen and those people who do that get the credit for it, but all the time they take it to themselves and they don't give it to God. We're going to see that shift come. Jesus knew all the time that you will make that entry into what the eternal Godhead planned for you. As I said, when that ark was born up, the Bible said before the foundation of the world, the Lamb of God was slain. You were planned a long time ago to complete right. some things. That's right. He's planned some things for you at the right level, at the right time, and now I believe He's counting on it and you. I believe also you're embracing it. Even now to let your spirit envision the greater works and greater things. And it's not just for you. I heard testimonies today where people left their, left their abodes and went and visited people in the hospital. My wife was in for um, a sleep artery aneurysm surgery. And before we got up to the hospital that morning, all the way, this brother was sitting in the waiting room waiting on us. Drive seven hours just to be there and turn around and goes back. Just so he could just pray. Say, we love you. That's family. That's the family of God. But I want to tell you what it meant to us. Words can't express that. I've heard many of you express those things today. It's so real. He's releasing you. He's releasing things to you today so that you can meet them at the crossroads of faith and possibilities. Yeah. I'm telling you, if you're considering it now, consider it's the Holy Spirit who's bringing it to your remembrance. That's right. Amen. I want to encourage you today to become more than you've ever been in the kingdom and can accomplish more than you ever imagined. And I think we can survey those desires that God has put in your heart and believe with confidence that it will happen. And, and I believe that this conference today is that time that God has afforded to set us aside to hear this word, to consider these things, these truths that we might act upon. I really do, with all my heart. Just by reminding you, you can never remain the same. We must strive for greater things. Listen, miracles are supposed to be impossible. If they weren't, everybody would be doing it. That's right. Come on. Oh, we know there's some charlatans. We know there's some of those out there motivated by other spirits. But I want to tell you something. The real deal is those who believe they can do the greater things and the greater works that Jesus gave them to do. Those are going to, those are going to stick. The world says the world's ways have tainted too many of our churches and our pastors' thinking. And thinking that we that it's okay to count on modest gains. It's okay. It's okay even that... Um, to even accept moderate declines. Hogwash. Are you listening to me? That doesn't sound like greater to me. That sounds like lesser to me. But that's not what the Holy, that's not why the Holy Spirit was poured out. No church community or geographic area can remain at status quo when a powder keg of spiritual fervor and passion is ignited, it's just one can believe the words of Jesus when he says greater things. Yeah. I don't know how many times I can nail that point. If Jesus preached the same messages that some preachers preach today, he would have never been crucified. <laughs> Listen, it's true. He'd been placating every political thing up and down the road. Well, you know, that's a gray area there, you'd have to say. <laughs> Come on now. Faith never allows a problem's existence a place of influence. Think about it. If it's a problem, it will influence you. Faith said you can't stay a problem. You've got to go in Jesus' name. But Pastor Lynn, we, we know more now than we've ever known. 
And I want to tell you what you think you know might be preventing you from what you need to know. He said, you shall do greater things. Is anybody taking that word and inserting their name? Put your name in there. Lynn. Doesn't that sound good? You shall do greater things. Brother Daniel, you've done greater things. You're going to do even greater things than you've ever imagined. Brother Abel, just dream, brother. Whatever God puts in here, it's greater things. It's achievable. Well, what do I have to do? Believe. That's right. Let the Spirit come in and fill you and let you dream and just sit into existence and believe that God's going to stand behind His Word to get it accomplished. I'm not expecting you to leave this place saying, wow, what a good sermon. But I am expecting you to say, I will do something. Amen. <laughs> yes. I'm going to do something. If you live cautious, the world will think you're wise. But you won't move many mountains. Jesus wants you to be the answer to the world's questions. Jesus knew the Comforter would first come to make us uncomfortable. I tell you, when the Holy Ghost came on me, I felt joy, but then I felt very uncomfortable because there were some things He was shaving and being done. I mean, weed eater and all those things, you know. I mean, I mean, the Holy Ghost came in. I, it changed my life. People say, you don't look the same. You lost an ear or something. I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is the point I want you to see today. This greater thing. He's returning for a bride whose body is in equal proportion to her head. Come on now. Come on. Yeah. Do you get that? Yeah. Not anemic. Can you see a big head, you know, a big giant head and a stick walking around as the body of Christ, the bride of Christ? No, in direct proportion to the head. That's what Jesus is expecting. Amen. Don't assume the routine in your life or in your church, but expect the greater at all times. Mm. I want to ask you, how many, just be honest with me, we're just, we're just, to be very honest means you're going to be very transparent. Is the Holy Spirit massaging your spirit right now? Amen. Is He speaking to you? Is He doing anything in you? Is anything of this clicking in you? You're going to get a chance here in just a moment. I want to close with this. What does greater than mean to me now? Right now. God is counting on your embrace of His Son's words. Can you say, while you were speaking, I could see myself believing and stepping into a level of greater works, greater things. And that is a level of consideration that He was expecting from you. That's all He's expecting, is a level of consideration that this is for me. Because if you can't say this is for me, then you're really saying, well, Thank you for saving me, but the rest of this stuff, you know, I'm going to relegate that to somebody else. I don't want to settle for anything less. I'm not motivated by my age. Age is not motivating me. I'm going to live a long time. I want to accomplish everything that He wants me to be. And, to be, and I was honest with you, I haven't done that. But I want to do it. I want to believe everything. I, I want to spend my life and be spent, as Paul says. That's right. The brother said last night as he was ministering, and I wrote this down. You said, greater love hath no man than this. You use that phrase, and now I said, there's another confirmation of the greater. Let me tell you, if you don't possess greater love, you can forget greater works and greater things. Yeah, good, Everything works by love. Yes, Are you ready to respond right now? I'm just being just just being blunt with you. It's time that we, we begin to see. Now look, 
whatever level you're on is the okay level that God has called you to for right now. Amen. But there has to be some greater things. We go from grace to grace, glory to glory, and as one man said, it's the two in the hallway that gives us a little bit defining. It's the glory to glory and the grace to grace. But when you get on a level of beginning to believe that that's for me, I don't, I don't believe, I'm not saying I believe I can do this. I believe Jesus said I can do this. Amen. And when I go up and I make a demand on His words that He told me, I know I have His Holy Spirit abiding in me. And I'm beginning to see some things begin to break and crumble in the kingdom of darkness. And there's things going to set people free. And, and there's going to be a great host of people coming to the kingdom of God that God wants to use me in. Do I have a clue what all of it is? I do not know yet. But I know that as I pursue it, in my pursuit of it, if I, if God, if I show myself a, a, a man who wants to pursue the things of God, I believe God will open up. He'll open it up. I had something else I wanted to say, and I just wonder if I, if I flipped over it. Because I, I think it was one of the, the best things that I, that I had to say to you. Uh, it had to do about revelation. I didn't find it, but here it is. When God gives you revelation like what we're saying here today, it would give you greater separation to that thing. Amen. Hello? You can't go to bed at night without thinking about this now. Because now you can't go back and say, he's already shown it to me. I can't go back now. <laughs> you can't go to the second grade with, without learning, knowing what you knew in the first grade. You, I can't fail this. All, they've already told me that. I already know. And the Holy Spirit's revealed to you things, revealed revelation, and now you're separated unto it. And so now you're closer to it than you've ever been before. And what the Holy Spirit wants to do is draw you, pull you in with cords of love and say, you're the one I can use. 